From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Fred Wills, the Surety Mutual Limited, Johnny. Oh, hi, Fred. What's on your mind? At the moment, San Francisco. Oh, nice town to have on your mind. What's new out there? That's what I hope you're going to tell me. What do you mean? Johnny, there's an importer out there named name of Andrew Foreman. We're carrying a $50,000 policy on his life. So? So have you ever heard of an importer getting exported? I don't get you, Fred. I'm afraid that's what's happened to Foreman. Last night he disappeared. I'm on my way. <laughs> Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, Act One of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Surety Mutual Limited, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Blinker matter. <laughs> Expense account item one, $178.50, transportation and incidentals to San Francisco. On the flight out, I studied the dope Fred Wills had sent me. Andrew Foreman, age 51. Occupation, importer. Health, good. Judging from the hefty premium he had to pay, his importing business must be okay. Wife, Marsha Foreman, age 35. 16 years younger than her husband. And Marsha was the sole beneficiary. My plane landed about 8 in the morning. An hour later, I was at the foreman's apartment. It was spacious, modern, with a lot of glass and the kind of view of the bay that you had to pay plenty for. Yeah, there was money written all over the place, and Marsha Foreman looked right at home. I'm just having coffee on the terrace, Mr. Dollar. Won't you join me? Oh, thanks. I could use some. Out here. Oh, you sure got a beautiful view here. Yes. I never get tired of watching the bay, the ships. There's always something going on. Oh, here you are. Thanks. What is it, Mr. Dollar? Oh, I'm... Just looking up the bay. Alcatraz? Yeah. Such a grim-looking place. Yeah, it's a real exclusive club. But I uh, managed to get a couple of new members into it. I don't think I care for the kind of job you have, Mr. Dollar. Trouble wherever you go. Suppose we talk about your troubles. All right. I told the police all I know when I filled out the missing persons report. But I'll go over it again for you. If you don't mind. Your husband disappeared the night before last. Yes, that's right. What time? I'm... I'm not sure. Oh? Around nine o'clock that night, somebody came to see him. A, a strange sort of man. How do you mean, strange? Well, he was dressed in rough clothes, a, a seaman's jacket. He said he was an old friend of my husband's. Did he give you his name, Mrs. Foreman? Only Blinker. Blinker? Yes, he said that's what everybody called him. I guess because he kept blinking his eyes very rapidly. I see. Well, I showed this this blinker person into the den where my husband was and left the two of them together. Uh-huh. A few minutes later, my husband came out and told me he was going to drive Blinker downtown and find him a hotel room. So I went to bed. I was tired and went right to sleep. And? Well, my husband and I have adjoining bedrooms. When I went in to call him yesterday morning, he was gone. The bed... It hadn't been slept in. I called his office, thinking he might have decided to work late. But they hadn't seen him. Then you called the police. Yes. Mrs. Foreman, had your husband ever mentioned this man Blinker before? No, I'm quite certain he hadn't. Can you describe him? Well, uh, he... He wasn't above medium height. Age, oh, maybe in the 40s. A scar on his right cheek, a thin nose, and... Dark, rather beady eyes. I'm afraid that's the best I can do. Well, considering that you only got a brief look at him, I'd say that was a pretty complete description. Mr. Dollar, do you think this person Blinker could have done anything to my husband? I don't know. But I'm sure the police are looking for him. Just one more question, Mrs. Foreman. 
Suppose Blinker had nothing to do with your husband's disappearance. I... I'm afraid I don't follow you. Oh, well, what I mean is, can you think of any reason, any reason at all, why your husband might want to disappear? No, Mr. Dollar. Absolutely not. Marsha Foreman sounded pretty certain of that last answer. Maybe just a little bit too certain. Expense account item two, a dollar eighty cab fare to the office of an old friend of mine, Detective Lieutenant Scapella. John, if Foreman took this character Blinker to a hotel, it's no hotel we ever heard of. We've covered them all. You think Blinker could have killed Foreman? Uh, it's a possibility. What's another? Maybe there is no Blinker. Yes, yeah, Scapella, I thought about that too. John, didn't it hit you there was something strange about Mrs. Foreman's story? She said she let Blinker in the apartment. She showed him to the den. Now, she could have only seen him a couple of minutes. Yet back. she rattled off a complete description of him. Yep. Sure is of me, Scapella, right between the eyes. And the way she described him. Yeah, I know. Seaman's jacket, beady, blinking eyes, scar on the right cheek. Oh, he sounds real distinctive. Real distinctive or real fake. Well, the trouble is, smelling a fake's one thing. Proving it's another what do we got for a motive? For one thing, 50,000 bucks. She was Foreman's sole beneficiary. That's interesting. That's real interesting. Excuse me, gentlemen. Capella. Oh? Oh, yes. What? I see. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. All right, thanks, Mr. Arnold. John, it looks like we've got to back up and start all over. What do you mean? That was Wayne Arnold. That's Foreman's attorney. He had a telephone call this morning. From Foreman? No, but from somebody just as interesting. Blinker. Yeah, Blinker. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Blinker Matter. Like Scapella said, we had to back up and start all over again. Just when we talked ourselves into thinking Marsha Foreman's story about Blinker was phony, her missing husband's lawyer phoned and told us he just heard from Blinker. Item three, a dollar seventy, cab fare to the office of Wayne Arnold, Foreman's attorney. I met him just coming out his door. Did you wish to see me? Mr. Arnold? Yes. I'm Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes, the insurance investigator. Mrs. Foreman told me you'd been questioning her. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm in rather a hurry. I have an appointment and I'm late for it. Sorry, but this will only take a minute or two. I was in Lieutenant Scapella's office when you phoned a while ago about this man Blinker, Mr. Arnold. Oh, yes. When did you hear from him? Just a little while ago. I called Marcia Foreman right away and she thought I ought to call Scapella. What did Blinker say on the phone? It was a strange conversation. He sounded nervous, excited, almost out of breath. Said he wanted money, $10,000. If he didn't get it, he'd... And that's as far as he got. He stopped suddenly, said he'd contact me later, then hung up. What do you make of it, Mr. Dollar? I don't know. Could be he's holding Foreman for ransom. That's what it sounded like to me. I take it you don't know this blinker. I never heard of him until Marsha told me about him showing up night before last. Okay. Uh, just one more thing, Mr. Arnold. How long have you been Foreman's attorney? Hmm? Three, four years. Why? Any reason you know of why he might want to disappear? None that I can think of. Another woman, maybe? I doubt it very much. How about his importing business? As far as I know, it's in excellent shape. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Arnold. Uh, Mr. Dollar. Yeah? This man Blinker, why would he have it in for Andrew Foreman? Good question, Arnold. Sorry I don't have an answer to it. I went down the elevator and outside. I stopped at the corner to get some cigarettes, and that was my first lucky break. Because just as I was leaving the counter, I saw Arnold come outside. And the way he looked up and down the street made it plain, he wanted to see if anybody was watching him. 
He got into his car and drove off. I grabbed a taxi. That's item four and trailed him. He drove into Golden Gate Park and stopped. I got out down the road and worked my way toward him behind some bushes. Pretty soon, a woman came over and got into his car. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I didn't need to. Because when I saw the kiss, I got the message. The woman was Marsha Foreman. I went back into town and waited for Marsha outside her apartment door. She showed up about half an hour later. What? Why, Mr. Dollar. What is it? Is something wrong? Yeah, something's real wrong, Mrs. Foreman. I want to talk to you. All right. Come in. But I've already told you all I know. The story you told me about this man, Blinker. There's no such person, is there? What? You and Arnold made it up. I know that's not true. What about you and Arnold, Mrs. Foreman? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, then tell me, did you enjoy your visit with him in Golden Gate Park an hour ago? Oh, that. Yeah. Well, all right, Mr. Dollar. Wayne Arnold and I have... Well, we've been in love for some time. Did your husband know? I'm not sure. We were trying to find the right time to tell him. I don't think he'd really have cared very much. Oh. My husband and I haven't gotten along very well the last year or two. I guess I really didn't know him when I married him. Mr. Dollar, this has nothing to do with my husband's disappearance. You must believe that. That's so. I didn't make up the story about Blinker. I didn't kill my husband, if that's what you're thinking. Has he been killed? I... I don't know. You, you've got me confused. If you didn't do it, how about Arnold? No. He'd have no reason. Besides, he wasn't even in town the night before last. I can check that. I know you can. <sighs> Mrs. Foreman, maybe you're telling me the truth, and maybe you're not. Sooner or later, I'm going to find out which. I am telling you the truth. And can you give me any reason at all why your husband has disappeared? There's... There's one possibility, Mr. Dollar... It might have something to do with his importing business. What's that mean? My husband... Well, he seems to have made a lot of money out of his importing business. More than the kind of thing he usually imports would warrant. What does he import? Oh, trinkets, curios. From the Orient, mostly. Have you a key to your husband's office? Yes. Let me have it. I want to take a look around. I went over the papers in Foreman's office and found out his last shipment had come in three days ago on the Indian Princess. Mrs. Foreman had said Blinker was wearing a seaman's jacket. I headed for the waterfront, but the ship was gone. Near the pier was a beat-up eating place called Gus's Cafe. A woman with an apron came over. She was about six feet tall and almost that wide. What can I do for you, buddy? I want to talk to the owner, Gus. That's me. Your Gus? Short for Gussie. What's on your mind, buddy? Johnny, Johnny Dollar. I want some information. You a cop, buddy? No, I'm not a cop. You look like a cop. Now listen, that freighter that shoved off from this pier, the Indian Princess. Stocks there regular. You know any of the sailors from her? Just about all of them. They all come in here. Hey, look, Gussie. Gus. Okay, Gus. You ever happen to hear of a sailor named Blinker? Sure. You know him? Sure. About medium height, scar on the right cheek, blinks his eyes all the time? I said I know him. What do you want, an affidavit? Oh, Gussie, you're the most beautiful thing that's happened to me all day. Uh, that's what they all tell me, buddy. But flattery don't get him a thing. Might help you, though. You're kind of cute. Uh, yeah, look, did Blinker sail on the Indian Princess? Nope. Then where is he? The fact is, I don't know. Blinker's disappeared. <laughs> Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Blinker Matter. And you don't have any idea where Blinker is now, Gus? Not the slightest, buddy. Oh, great. And I'm right back where I started from. Blinker was mixed up in something, all right. What do you mean? The Indian princess docked the other night. Blinker come in here for a cup of coffee. That's one thing the sailors around here all miss when they're out to sea. My coffee. There's no one makes coffee like me. Why, there's nobody on the whole yeah, coast. Yeah, yeah, I know. About Blinker now. Well, he seemed pretty pleased with himself. Said he was on to something good. Did he say what he meant by that? No. Just sat there looking pleased with himself. Oh, yeah. He showed me the elephant. Said it was going to make him a lot of money. What elephant? 
He had a carved elephant about six inches high. Must have picked it up somewhere. Maybe he was going to sell it. I don't know. Hmm. Foreman imported curios from the Orient. His last shipment came in on the Indian Princess. That elephant could have been part of it. Foreman? Who's he? Uh, never mind. Well, I wonder where I go from here. I wonder what I'm going to do with all Blinker's stuff if he don't show up for it. Maybe I'm... Sp- what did you say about Blinker's stuff? What stuff? I got a back room where I let the boys keep their gear when they're ashore. You've got Blinker's things there now? Sure have. Why didn't you tell me? You never asked me. In the back room, I went through Blinker's sea bag. Near the bottom, I found the carved elephant. An ordinary-looking elephant until I twisted one of the legs loose. It was hollow. And inside, a little paper packet full of white powder. Suddenly, the whole deal slid into place, and just as suddenly, the whole deal made me slightly sick. Now I wanted to see the rest of those elephants real bad. According to the records in Foreman's office, the shipment was in a warehouse. I went outside and over to the pier. Johnny. What? Oh, Gus. Come here a minute, Johnny. Look, look, I'm in a hurry. Thanks for everything. I'll see you later. You've got time to see this. Over here, near the pier. Wait a minute. Yep. It's a body, all right. One of the boys just fished it out of the water. I sent him to call the cops. Looks like it's been in the water quite a few hours. Gus? Yep. It's Blinker, all right. I knew I had to work fast now. I headed out on the pier for the warehouse. Once I thought I heard footsteps somewhere behind me. I stopped and listened. There was no sound. It was dark inside the warehouse, but with the help of matches, I located Foreman's shipment. I took a crowbar and opened one of the crates. It was full of carved elephants. I picked up one of them. Yeah. It had a hollow leg. And the hollow leg was full of the same white powder. I hit the floor fast. The shot had come from over near the door. I eased my gun out and waited. Five, ten minutes went by. I kept quiet. Then suddenly a shadow loomed up near the crates. We saw each other at the same time. My shoulder. Oh, well. The missing man himself, Andrew Foreman. Look, I... Linker I... found out what you were importing in those carved elephants. He tried to blackmail me. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, sure, sure. You probably told him you'd pay off. That's when you drove him downtown, night before last. Then you tried to kill him, but he must have got away. I tell you... You called your lawyer, tried to put the squeeze on through him. But he had to hang up in a hurry. You were probably getting close... You finally caught up with him, didn't you, Foreman? Look, you, you've got no proof of anything. Why should Blinker try to blackmail me? Like I say, he found out about the narcotics in those hollow elephants. It was put there without my knowledge. You have no proof I was involved. You know, Foreman, it doesn't much matter. You've got even bigger troubles than that staring you in the face. I, I don't understand. Blinker's body has been recovered from the bay. I wouldn't know anything about that. You've got no proof of that either. No. There were two bullet holes in Blinker. Five will get you ten. The slugs in him came from this gun of yours. The gun? Yeah. This is something that can be proved. Well? Uh, all right. I just didn't have any choice. Item five, $183 even, transportation and incidentals home. Expense account total, $434.50. Remarks? Andrew Foreman made a complete statement to the police. The murder case against him is open and shut. So, it looks like he's going to beat the narcotics rap after all. The hard way. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yo 
Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Today's story was written by Robert Stanley. Heard in our cast were Paula Winslow, D.J. Thompson, Harry Bartell, Stacey Harris, Vic Perrin, and Bob Bruce. 